when your love has moved away. You must face yourself and you must say, I remember better days. In my opinion, when you're grappling, if you grapple consistently and you do it a lot, you start to train part of your psyche or your brain that's very difficult to train otherwise. Most people don't willfully put themselves in a really bad physical position. I mean, we're just walking around, you don't look at your friend and be like, hey, lay on top of me and try and crush the life out of me. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen to most people, right? <laughs> if you're a wrestler, maybe. But even then, it's like with sport bets, when you're doing this stuff, and you're trying to like simulate breaking the other person's arm or choking them unconscious. Once a person's unconscious, then their life is in your hands. That's, that's a final thing. But it's also the maneuver stuff. When you're in a bad position, when to quit, when to submit, all that kind of stuff. And I think if you grapple regularly, you train your mind to make um, certain types of decisions. To recognize when you're in a bad situation. Right? So it's decision making. Combat decision making, to me, is almost exactly the same with, with the absence of you're gonna die, which is a pretty big thing, but with the absence of that, what you do when you grapple is, is the same thought process that happens in you. It's the same if you can learn to translate the lessons. It's not just about a physical confrontation between you and another person. It's about how you think, how you deal with a situation that you have no control over, that someone else is controlling. You know, what happens when you submit? What happens when you tap out?